powerful weapons. I tell you, you know, I was praying. I, I just, you know, because the only reason you put a title with something, if the Lord wants is so we'll remember it. And uh, I was going to say monster weapons. Because they're big and they're against the monsters of our lives, too. But, but powerful weapons. Powerful weapons. Weapons, And we never need to forget that we're on the winning side. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. That this is the victory that's overcome the world, even our faith. God always causes us to triumph in all things. Thanks be to God who always gives us the victory. Yes. And so we need to just remember these things. And uh, again, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Thank you. So Romans 15, we're going to look at some weaponry because the Christian is in a spiritual warfare. Bunyan wrote that classic book called The Holy War a few centuries ago. It still holds true today. Military imagery abounds in the New Testament in our war, our Christian's spiritual war against the world, the flesh, and the devil, and his imps, his kingdom. All right, Romans 15, verse 15 says, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I have therefore, whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders. If you don't mind, let's everybody say mighty signs and wonders. Mighty signs and wonders. Mighty signs and wonders. By the power of the Spirit of God. If you don't mind, let's say the power of the Spirit of God. The power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem round about into Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Sounds to me like Paul went out with some mighty weapons Amen. to preach the gospel. Verse 20, Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. As we go down to verse number 29, it says this, And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. The fullness of the gospel has some mighty weapons with it. I'm thankful. Why don't we ask God to do everything he wants to do in the yes, remainder of this service. Let's pray together. God, I glorify you. I love you, God. And you're in this house. You're every Holy Ghost filled person, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you. God, help all of us to understand in Jesus' name the weapons that you've given us. Let us be wise in the using of them, God. In Jesus' name. Let us be practiced with the art of spiritual war, that we will know how to use every weapon, God, in Jesus' name, and how to counteract every weapon that yes. our enemy, the enemy of our souls, the one wants us to join him in hell for eternity, that he would use against us. Help us to have yes. understanding. Open our minds, open our hearts, God. Open our lives. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's everybody say in Jesus' name. And why don't we just glorify the Lord again? He's good to us. Hallelujah. I glorify in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you turn to a neighbor and just say, We win. We win. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God's the pulling out of strongholds. I'm reminded of a message I knew of someone who preached in the south of Atlanta a few years ago, and he happened to be an avid gun collector. So for his message, he brought a sack full of weapons. He brought Colt Pythons, revolvers, Smith and Wessons, and Glocks, and, and uh, all kinds of stuff in an attempt to show in an illustrative form, the weapons of a Christian's warfare. We all know that when you use earthly means, you get what earthly means can accomplish. 
But when we use Holy Ghost filled means, when we use God's means, we get what God can accomplish. And he is the creator. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons that we have are not just defensive. Notice they are offensive. Notice they just don't hurt the enemy, but they also tear the enemy's kingdom down. To the pulling down of strongholds, buildings, castles. It pulls these things. You and I are equipped with the whole armor of God, helmet of salvation, loins skirt about with truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, a breastplate of righteousness, above all, taking the shield of faith, which is able to quench every fire yard of the wicked one, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Paul admonishes, in quite possibly the last book Paul ever wrote on this earth, the young minister, his son in the gospel, this concerning the Christian's spiritual warfare. He said this in 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4, Thou therefore in dear heart, this is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. People have argued for centuries whether women should be in the military. Well, if you're a woman Christian, you have been in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Regardless of what your particular country so deems and the physical. Verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Now we have a very real enemy. And you and I know people who have been ensnared by the enemy. We probably know people who have died, lost, and go to hell that at one time believed in Jesus Christ, was born again of water and spirit, and lived a godly, holy life. So there are enemies that are out there. So we need to at least take a look at our enemy's weaponry. Sun Tzu would encourage us, who wrote The Art of War, to know your enemy's strengths and weaknesses. So we are at war. And Ephesians 6.16 says our enemy has fiery darts. These fiery darts are temptation, sin, sometimes the media, Hollywood, rulers of the darkness, lies. The enemy practices psychological warfare against the saints of the living God. In Revelation chapter 12, verse number 10, we read one of his weapons that he uses against the saints of God. And it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast out, which accused them before our God day and night. So Satan accuses you. He doesn't just accuse you to your brother, to your sister, to the world at large. He accuses you and I before the throne of Almighty God. Satan accuses us for every weakness, for every failure, for every shortcoming that we may have. Every time we should have witnessed and didn't. Every time we should have prayed and failed to do so. Satan accuses us before the throne of God. Satan comes in your mind, in your heart. And tells you with his fiery darts that you are not saved. That you are not who you think you are in Jesus. That you really didn't get all that power when you got the Holy Ghost and you got baptized in Jesus' name. That your horrible sins from your past really haven't been forgiven. And that God really doesn't care about you. And God does not have strength to take care of you today. And God is in an eternal warfare with the devil and may barely squeak out a victory, but quite possibly the outcome is in doubt. Nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah, come on. God is the creator. Satan is a created being. Right. The weapon that he has operates mostly in the realm of psychological operations. <laughs> It is an attack of our mind to keep us from living in the joy and the peace and the power that God has ordained for us. That greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. That the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and power in 
the Holy Ghost. Many strong men have fallen prey to the devil. One of Satan's favorite arrows is fear. Fear to worship. Fear to witness. Fear of coronavirus. Fear of everything else that is in life. Fear of old age. Fear of not having enough. Fear of the next political party. Fear of the next election. Fear is a fiery dart of the wicked one. Deception is one of his greatest tactics. Since he is limited in power, he has to project that he is very strong in power. He is like the bully that knows he really can't beat up anybody and is full of insecurities, but he has to talk a really good game. Satan uses lies as psychological warfare. That the word of God is truth. The Holy Ghost is truth. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. But he wants to sow just enough lies so you doubt. Did evolution really happen? Did Jesus really die on the cross? Did all these things really occur? Did the Red Sea really open for millions of people? Did Jesus really feed 20,000 at once? Did, was there really manna in the wilderness for millions of people? And he sows lies and deceptions. Yes, he does. Immorality. There's more pleasure in a sexual trias than there is in the power of the Holy Ghost and the hope of heaven. That there's more pleasure in looking at pornography than there is making the holy city. He has false weapons with false prophets. Who get up and speak great things and mighty things and say things out of the word of God. But if you obey everything that they say, you will end up not in heaven, but in hell. Because they're not giving you the full picture. I'm talking to us a little bit about the weapons of the devil. Hatred of the image of God. Hating other people formed in the image of God. Satan again increases his lies, but also simultaneously decreasing God's power. He puts in your mind, why go to church? It'll just be the same people. Nothing will happen. Everything will be just the way it is. Unless we pay an evangelist to come and pull a rabbit out of a hat, there's really no reason to come to the house of God. Because you see, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's right. I find the play on words, the lion, lion, to be very telling. <laughs> but Satan can do what he will. But to the apostolic child of God, it is useless. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. To the person that is filled with the Holy Ghost, that is prayed up, that's speaking with tongues, that is bawled out and sold out, yes. completely born again, the devil has no power Amen. in your life. Come on. Amen. Amen. Though God may allow certain things to come in your life, there are certain chastenings of the Lord, yes. there are certain things that occur, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, that nothing can move you away from the love and the power of Almighty God. Yes. I feel like it is fitting to read once again in Romans chapter 8, the last part of this, because somebody needs to hear this. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. What that means is, is the devil can give you his best shot, and if you want to make heaven, you can make heaven. Yeah. Satan can pull out every arsenal, every weapon in his weaponry, and he still can't defeat the child of God. Hallelujah. It is true, church. You and God make a majority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we just glorify the Lord for that? Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that. So we're just going to look. We looked at a little bit of the devil's weapons. Let's look at a little bit of God's weapons here. The first is found in Revelation 12 and 11 that we'll look at. And they overcame him. Who's the him? Satan, if you look at verse 10. By the 
the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. How do you get the blood in your life? You repent of your sins. You get baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of blood. And you receive the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues. Friend, I'm telling you, you get the blood of the Lamb applied to your life. And how do you keep the blood flowing in your life? If you walk in the light as he is in the light, you and I have fellowship one with the other. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So when you're born again and you're walking the Christian walk, that's what we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Devil, you couldn't keep me bound. You had me bound. You had me wrapped in chains, but you couldn't keep me there. I'm walking. Who the Son has made free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Why don't we just glorify the Lord a little bit? Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are in Christ. If Satan couldn't beat Jesus, he can't beat you. Amen. Not because we're anything, but because Jesus supernaturally put us in his body yeah. at the born again experience. Oh, yeah. So we're in Christ. The one who created the devil, the one who created everything, lives on the inside of us. We are not cowering in a corner. But we are walking in the power of the Holy Ghost just like Jesus did. Hallelujah. For as he is, so are we in this world. In James 2.19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. How many of you believe there's just one God here today? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You see, fear hath torment. So if you want to torment the devil, you start proclaiming the oneness of God, and that one God lives on the inside of you. You don't have to live in fear. Satan should be living in fear of the God that is on the inside of you. Some tells me ought to just glorify the Lord a little bit. Hallelujah. About some weapons. The blood is a weapon. Yeah. When we say we plead the blood, we're saying we've got the blood of Jesus in our life. Yeah. It has been applied and it is flowing, Woo. and God has set me free from my past and has given me a new future yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. Hey. Glory to God. Yes. First Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, let's everybody say adversary. What's keeping you from worshiping right now? The adversary. What's keeping you from selling out to Jesus? The adversary. What's keeping you from saying, here I am in total abandonment to Jesus Christ? What's doing that? The adversary, the adversary, fiery dark, got in your brain and said, I don't have to do it right now. I've got tomorrow. You don't, you don't know that you've got tomorrow. You know. The Bible says today is the Saturday of salvation. Now is the accepted time. The only time you and I have to worship Jesus Christ is right now. Right now. Jesus said, take no thought for the morrow. For sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Hallelujah. Why don't we just glorify the Lord again? I'm glad I've got the one God on the inside of me. The creator's on the inside of me. So your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's come by your house. That angel of death has come to your house. Can I eat them? Can I bite them? Can I devour them? Can I destroy them? And many times, sometimes through bitterness and through anger and through lies and certain things you've got coming through your television and certain things you've got coming through your internet. You've actually invited the devourer of your soul into your house. But friend, I'm here to tell you, we have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we've got some more powerful weapons. Verse number nine tells us another powerful weapon who resists steadfast in the faith 
knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Resist steadfast in the faith. Acts 2.38, with you standing on the rock of Jesus Christ and the born again experience, Satan cannot attack you. Sometimes you've just got to resist. And according to Ephesians chapter 6, you and I just have to stand. Sometimes we're just standing, again, on the gospel of Jesus Christ, on the name of Jesus, on the power of the Holy Ghost, on holiness of life, on the inspiration of the Word of God, that Jesus is coming again, that God has destroyed every work of the devil. We're just standing. God's calling some people to stand in the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Hey, we're going to get the praises of weapon of our warfare in a minute, but we need to praise right now. Hallelujah. There's some things right now that's trying to bind some people. You need to praise them off in the name of Jesus. You need to praise them off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need to be like Paul and Simon. You've had some yokes put on you. had some chains put on you. But you just need to glorify the Lord. Glory to the name of Jesus. They have been beat. They have been cast into the inner prison. But when they worship Jesus. Hallelujah. An earthquake. God will send the Holy Ghost earthquake your way. God got a Holy Ghost earthquake. Why don't you just begin to praise the Lord a little bit? Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Some of you are getting free. Hallelujah. Some of you are getting free. Glory to the name of Jesus. Some of you are breaking out. Glory to God. You know, the Bible says it's for whosoever will. If you don't break out, it's not Jesus' fault. It's not your neighbor's fault. It's not your husband's fault. It's not your wife's fault. It's your fault. God is no respecter of person. He brought everybody up out of Egypt. He didn't leave anybody behind that was in covenant. Glory to the name of Jesus. We ought to just praise Him again. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm talking about just standing. Let's everybody say stand. Stand. You can be seated. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 11, verses 12 and through 14. First Chronicles chapter 11. Verses 12 through 14. We're talking about a weapon of our warfare standing in the name of Jesus. Verse 12. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighty. And he was with David at Pasdemon. And there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley. And the people fled from before the Philistines. So some people didn't stand, did they? They ran when the enemy came in like a flood. They didn't wait for the Spirit of the Lord to lift up a stand. So they ran. And so verse 14, and they set themselves in the midst of that parcel. They just stood in the midst of that parcel and delivered it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them. By a great deliverance. Friend, I'm here to tell you, be an act to that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, yeah. I'm so thankful that when I got the Holy Ghost, when I was 18 years of age, I'm preaching the same gospel that I preached then. I'm preaching from the same Bible that I preached from then. As far as translation, I'm preaching the same doctrine. It still takes the same thing to make the holy city. Some people just need to stay. That church is gone. You don't need to go and look at all those things. You need to stand on what you know is true and what you know is right. It's like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I serve. I may be in the midst of a, of a experience, 
skin worms eating this body out in a trash dump on the outside of the city. But I know when I was in the right circumstance, I was serving Jehovah. And my mind is made up and I am set. And that's how I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm talking about a weapon of your warfare. Quickly, some other weapons. James 4, 2, prayer. You have not because you ask not. Those arrows of the Lord's deliverance. You and I can see the world changed in prayer. We're having special prayer service Tuesday. We may have it the next Tuesday as well. We've got to be apostolic in our praying. This world needs apostolic praying. It needs the church of the living God to catch hold of prayer. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. As long as you've got right doctrine and you've got right lifestyle and you've got prayer you are an unstoppable force in Jesus name I always tell people it doesn't matter sometimes the bells and the whistles around something is you've got to have prayer prayer is the power that is where anointing comes from that is where miracles come from that's where signs come from it's through prayer some of you need a prayer life you need a prayer closet you need something where you can grab hold of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about monster weapons here today. They're slaying the monsters in your life, and they are my friend, they are so much more powerful than anything the devil's got. Come on here. I was looking up a book on Amazon the other day, and it came up speaking with tongues, and it was an occult book. And it was Brother Smith, it was how uh, to speak with tongues by Satan. And when you can speak in certain tongues, you can call this demon. And you can call that demon. And you can call that demon. And I thought, how sad that if they would just give themselves to the one true and living God, you can call on the mighty God. You can call on the creator. These poor people that are in the witchcraft, friend, that can be broken in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit of Satanism in witchcraft can go down in the name of Jesus. But the church has got to pull down those strongholds who are mighty weapons you got. Why don't we just glorify Jesus? So we have not because we ask not. Psalm 149. The next weapon of our warfare is praise. If you don't mind, let's everybody say praise. Psalm 149 says this. The next to the last Psalm, 149. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Yes. So that's the word of God in worship. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Our praise and worship service is so much more than good sound and tight harmony. Our praise and worship is even more than sincerity and worshiping God in spirit and in truth. When the Old Testament saints went out, Judah went out first, which means praise. Hallelujah. When the enemy came in like a flood, they said, what should we do? You go out praising the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, with King Jehoshaphat, I'm telling you, you keep praising Jesus. You keep worshiping the Lord. Worship Him in the sanctuary. Worship Him in your temple. Worship Him in your home. And go everywhere praying, lifting up holy hands. Victory is yours. Yes. Victory is yours. Yes. Victory is yours. Yes. Thank you. So pray the blood. The word of our testimony. Pray. Yes. Man, we got some monster weapons, yes. don't we? Yes. Why don't we just praise you yes. again? Yes. In Ephesians 4.27, holiness. This goes along with the blood. Holiness. 
It says give no place to the devil. There are spies sent from the enemy. And he constantly tries to get the ground that he used to own back. And so you need to close every doorway in your life. Reading dirty books, watching dirty movies. These are open doorways to the devil. Bitterness, grudge, gossip. These are open doorways to the devil. And Satan will come. And where Satan is, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan comes to destroy you. But Jesus came that you and I might have life in that more abundantly. In 1 John 5, 18, we have this promise. It says, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. He closes every doorway. And he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Satan can't touch you if you're walking in holiness and you're born again of water and spirit. Another of these monster bloody weapons we've got is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We can cut the enemy. We can bind demonic spirits. We can do all these. We realize our privileges. We realize his final end and his current state. And we realize our final end in our current state through scripture. Friend, you just start quoting the, the scripture at the enemy. The enemy, he is bound eternally by the word of God. He has to respond to the word of God. So you just quote scripture. When the enemy came in three different times to Jesus, Jesus showed us how to combat. He just didn't sit there and play games on He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Some of you got some circumstances in your life. You're going through terrible things. You're not sure you can make it. You just need to start quoting to those circumstances. It is written. It is written. It is written. God will answer the prayers however he wants to answer the prayers. We don't need to be telling him how to answer the prayers. We just need to really believe in that God's going to answer the prayers. Weapons of our warfare. Let's everybody say weapons of our warfare. Weapons of our, weapons of our, weapons of our warfare. The name of Jesus, Proverbs 18 and 10, says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and are saved. Friend, I'm here to tell you, just as our weaponry can tear down the strongholds of the devil, we have a stronghold that we can run into that Satan can't assail or attack. And it's the name of Jesus. When you've been baptized in Jesus' name, when you've asked in Jesus' name for your sins to be forgiven, when you've asked in Jesus' name to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're a person of the name of Jesus. You're in the body of Christ. You have that name applied to your name. And that name is above every name. It is higher than every name that is named in heaven and in earth. It is the highest name that you can have and that I can have. So when depression comes in, say Jesus. When fear comes in, say Jesus. When the marriage issues happen, say Jesus. When the finances are bad, say Jesus. When the devourer comes in, say Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a mighty weapon of our warfare. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. I feel like we need to be reminded about it. It says this. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him, Jesus, a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Now, I want to stop right there and let us examine that a moment. That at the name of Jesus, every knee. So this excludes absolutely nothing. Every devil. It doesn't matter if they're mighty devils. It doesn't matter if it's the devil himself. It doesn't matter if it's chief assistants. Doesn't matter if it's Beelzebub. above. Doesn't matter who it is, whatever it is, at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Whether they're in heaven, whether they're in the earth, or whether they're under the earth. And then that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. He has to realize that the one God was manifest in flesh. Hallelujah. Go out in the name of Jesus. We're people in the name of Jesus. Why don't we stand to our feet and say in the name of Jesus. And why don't we just begin to worship the Lord in the name of Jesus. God in Jesus' name. God, I'm asking you to help us as your people. Help me. Let us walk in the fullness of this weapon. Let us go out with our war garments on. Walk it in Jesus' name. In victory. For the Sangarabahataya. You have not left us comfortless. You have come to us. You have not left us comfortless. You have come to us. Help us, God, in Jesus' name. To walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you'll stand, if you'll do these things and use these weapons, then I want to give you, we've already read one promise of perseverance, but I want to read to you another one. And it is John 10, 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Hey, neither height nor death, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you and I from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Satan might say, I'm going to put, he can't pull you away. He can't take the Holy Ghost from you. It's a free gift from a covenant making God and he can't pull it out of you. Over every mountain, every obstacle, every situation, I've come through. <laughs> Friend, I'm telling you, there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Hallelujah. Don't you want to just walk in the fullness of those weapons? I'm telling you, I'm learning every day more of what Jesus did for me, Calvary. More of what I got at Pentecost. Yeah. Hallelujah. When the church, when our eyes are open, we, we pray for more power. God's just like, let me open your eyes to see the power you've already got. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, open their eyes. Yeah. This world, this area, the city of Albany won't be able to handle the blessings of God that are coming to the people of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's pray together if you want that fullness. Of these monster and these mighty weapons. Let's pray. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, I glorify you. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you. I exalt you, Lord Jesus. God, to open all of our eyes. Let us walk in these mighty weapons. Kishonorobohokaina, intercessory prayer. God, there's so much more in this Christian life. But God, through it all, you'll keep us. You care for us. We're the apple of your eye. Glory to the name of Jesus. Why don't we just praise Him again? We praise you, God. The word of our worship. You say, you pull me out of the mountain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 You can pray together. Others, why don't you give a social distance apostolic prayer for somebody around you? For a couple of somebody's around you. Let's let the body of Christ minister to itself today. God, in Jesus' name, let's pray together. Your prayers are a weapon. God, in Jesus' name, do miracles, do signs, do wonders, God. God, do miracles. In the name of Jesus, let us walk in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Let us walk in the truth. God, let us walk in your love. Let us walk in your joy. Let us walk in your peace. God, let us walk in your anointing. Let everybody get the Holy Ghost. It needs the Holy Ghost. Yes. Jesus, anybody needs a refreshing, a renewal in the Holy Ghost, let them get a refreshing and a renewal from the Holy Ghost. Glory to the name of Jesus. I love you, God. In Jesus' name, I love you, God. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God, give us a great week in the Holy Ghost. Let us walk as apostolic. 
God, help my mind to be open to all the spiritual weaponry you've given. Help all of our minds, God, in Jesus' name. Let there be a great in gathering, a great influx, God. God, let us win souls, God. You said, pray you there for the Lord to harvest. You'd send forth laborers into your harvest. Send them out, Jesus. Send them out. We follow you, and you will make us fishers of men. God, in Jesus' name, we're asking, we're believing, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, why don't we just glorify him again? Hallelujah. We're going to go today. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God.